you said, I read in an interview, I really never had a hobby outside of work. It became a 100 hour work week. And that's why, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said, as part of that conversation, you said making a lot of money isn't enough. And so it was your childhood dream to go to space. And so you ventured in to becoming a pilot. Give us a little bit of that story of how that all came about. That's pretty cool. Because you, yeah, well, you, you were flying fighter jets. I just find that, I mean, amazing. When I read that you're flying in unison and then your team sent me some video of you flying in, in unison 18 inches apart, you've got to give us the overview of that. You already know. My passion and my mission to help you unleash your greatness with them. My heart goes out to the underdogs. That, that's on their way. If you think you can, go from good to great. Okay, let's motivate. Greatness oh. within yeah, sure. Uh, so it, it's totally true that I uh, I needed a hobby. I always had a childhood passion for aviation. I mean, I when I was a kid, I was playing you know flight simulators on computers I built and such, and you know, it um it was always there. But then my my true love and my my passion immediately became the business. Once you create it, like it's just like I said before, you, you gotta you gotta really try and minimize you know distractions and outside interests because odds are stacked against you right from the start. But I can think about I was probably three or four years into the, the company, and you know you're just waking up on your keyboard every day, and then you're doing it over again. And for as many successes as we've had, I felt like geez, like there has to be more in my life than than just this. And um, so I picked up flying. And I started flying in 2004 and I never slowed down. Uh, if I look for any reason to fly, it was therapeutic. If it was night, I could just go up and, you know, just chill and, uh, and look out in the sky. And, um, and that led me very quickly to flying jets, which uh, led me to, um, you know, flying ex-military aircraft, which led to air shows. Um, and, you know, even then just talking about business and entrepreneurship, you know, when we were flying air shows, that was purely a hobby event, um, you know, relatively high risk one uh, at that. And it was, how do we pivot this into something commercial? Like, this is unique. You know, civilians don't fly fighter jets. Like, there has to be some need here, some problem to solve. And it turned out there was a huge one inside the Department of Defense, which led to creating a defense aerospace business that went from, you know, when we first started, the Air Force said, there's no problem here for you to solve. We, we thought otherwise. It became a $6 billion industry by the time, uh, you know, I left the, uh, the organization just a year ago. Um, so anyway, that's just an example of, you know, you got a passion, but you spot opportunity and you can, you can turn it into something commercial. You are like a master problem solver. It seems like, I mean, you, you see a problem in the marketplace and you go, there's probably an easier way to do this. I had that thought that you just answered. Did the air force think that they even had a deficiency? And no, they did not. <laughs> and here you filled that because you had your eyes open. You had a passion for something. Did it just come to you late at night or was it your team that gathered around and you, as you got involved, you started to notice, Hey, there's an opportunity here. Is that how that kind of came about? Yeah, it was definitely a team effort for sure. Um, I mean, we were, you know, you're totally brothers with everybody when you're flying air shows because you are 18 inches apart and you have to have immense trust, uh, you know, because obviously a lot can go wrong. And, you know, we, we had plenty of time to sit around the table and discuss this and say, you know, there is an opportunity here with the military, because just simply, you know, well, first, it's a good assumption in general that the government is not going to be very cost effective or efficient on anything they do. It's a good starting assumption. I right? agree. Yes. And, and then you look at budgetary environments and some of the Geography progression. And, fighters. Yeah. And just, there, there was a lot there to support our position. And then you just had to take some risks. And, um, and we did. Um, we went out and we started buying fighter jets from all over the world. But the Air Force told us, no, uh, they I still have a copy of the letter where it said, there is no requirement for what you're trying to accomplish here. And that was in 2014. And 18 months later, we had our first contract uh, with the Air Force. 18 months thereafter, it became a $6 billion industry. So it can happen really quick once you prove it out. 